see that. It's running fine now. Okay. So as you can see in the debug version, we render a lot of stuff and whoa, okay. I just hit up once and he is going crazy. And he's falling back down again now, but very fast. So as you can see, um, our code works. It's just difficult to tell that it did actually work for us. I'm just hitting the key once now and he goes up miles. So there's a lot of adjustment we need to do. The very first thing we need to do is to actually adjust and clamp his linear velocity to a specific amount upwards. So I'll show you how to do that. It's quite easy. We'll just close it. So this can be done in the player itself. It should probably only be done once a frame for after all input handling is finished because there might be various things that change the linear velocity. So let's look at the player's update function. I'm just going to collapse this guy so it's a bit clearer. Okay, that's a lot better. Okay, so like everything else, the player has an update method. And in here, that's where all these composite input methods get updated. So what we need to do is, right at the end, is to clamp his linear velocity after all that stuff happens. So we need to get the rigid body, which is just a member of the player class, because the, the player is an actor object, and act, all actors have a rigid body. So we can just ask for the rigid body from the actor, as you can see up here. So I believe there's a set linear velocity or something that we can use. And what we actually want to do is first we have to obtain the linear velocity. So I did a bit of research and my first stab at solving this problem is going to be to take the player's linear velocity after all these things have been applied and to actually clamp it to a certain length. So the linear velocity is just a vector that says how quickly a rigid body is moving through 3D space in whichever direction. So it's quite easy to get a hold of. I you know, have a creative btvec3 object containing the original velocity which we can access using get linear velocity. As you can see, that returns us the linear velocity. Let me just put a little comment here so the next person knows what I'm doing. Stop player moving too fast and into penetrating his objects. So if the current velocity's length is greater than an arbitrary value, which we have to define. So we can make that a float. Let's put max velocity length. Let's make that um, 10 to start with. Let's check that that returns a float. Yep, it returns BT scatter is a float. So if that length is too great, all we need to do is clamp it. So what we do is we just take the vector and we return it. So all we do is um, we just set a new vector. So I'm just going to do that. So we create a new vector. And this vector is the same direction as the other vector, but a different length. So we actually want to try and I believe you can just take a vector and we will probably just normalize it. To give us a vector of length one and then we will multiply it i think there is actually a function for that operator asterisk equals let's just go and check that that does what we want no, wrong wrong class let's try again what we want is in oh dear it doesn't seem to exist for this object We'll just try this. I'm pretty sure that the PT vector does support doing this. So we were actually going to multiply by the maximum length. So that effectively clamps the length of that vector. So let's go and look at PT vector three. Does it have a multiply operator? I'm sure. I'm sure it had something like that. Yes, it does have a. I don't know why that search didn't work. So that's S is a scale factor, which is exactly what we want. So we normalize it and then we scale it to the maximum, which effectively clamps it to that vector of length 10 in this case. That's it. 
that's all we need to do. And just for completeness, I'm actually going to make it print a little message. I'll just try and remember how, how we do that. Oh, yes, that's right. Trace line printf. So every time it does do this, I want it to say that it's doing it. So let's just say clamped player eval to player eval. Let's start with that and see how we go. I'm going to have to keep an eye on the output window this time too. So it's running okay so far. He, he moved and he fell down into his normal position. Let's see if we can move around. Working okay so far. Oh, I don't think that that clamp has actually worked. Let's see if we're getting any debug output. No, it's actually not reaching this. So that's very interesting. It means that our initial length is way too large. So we'll stop the debugger and let's make it really small, like one. And in fact, just to be safe, let's um, get rid of this one, get rid of this trace message and print out what it actually is. Because I'm actually curious to find out what this velocity is. I was expecting it to be much bigger than this. So we'll just print it out every frame. Let's see what we get for that. We'll, we'll jump once. Okay, that should give us enough sample data to work with. So let's close the app and have a look at the output. Okay, whoa, okay, zero. That's not quite, oh, now this is very interesting. I think the print statement act may actually be wrong here. Oh yeah, I put the here in the wrong place. All right, try again. But this is good. It's becoming more sort of closer to the range of values I was expecting it to be. I guess we'd have to adjust our range to be smaller. Let's see what it does now. So I'm just going to jump once and come back down again and close it. And let's go and have a look at what the output looks like for this. Normally I'd have this running on two monitors so I could just have a quick glance over. Oh, okay, so his velocity actually comes quite close to one. Which is very interesting. So that's good, that's fine. It just means we need to clamp it to one. So now we should be getting some clamping because that did go a little bit further one. So let's make it a ridiculously small value to begin with and see what effect that has on our gameplay. You can see this is really interesting. Um, he actually falls quite slowly. It seems to be a little bit better. It can still go up. So we may need to refine this model slightly. But it's already fitting a little bit better because he doesn't fall at a ridiculous rate. It's a lot more like an old school platformer now, as you can see. So that fudged number that we put in there was actually quite a good number. And then this other motion seems to be unaffected. So that's cool. And you won't fly off the screen quite as easily. All right, I'm quite happy with that. So let's check that in for now. We'll just get rid of this. Thanks for watching.